cornerstone uh, inspections and cornerstone has been a partner of ours in the corporate book for a handful of years now um, and just thought it'd be good to get out and maybe introduce you to a few things maybe you're not <laughs> readily aware of so we'll let him kind of pick off. Thanks Rick. Again, my name is BJ Bessler, and I'm the marketing manager uh, for Cornerstone Inspection Services. I am not a home inspector. Um, I started at Cornerstone at the beginning of this year, and uh, it's been really, really fun. So, jump right into it. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about radon. And I don't know, how many of you guys here are really, really familiar with radon? Anybody? Anybody can take a test on it and probably pass a... Oh, no, but I grew up in a basement with radon really high. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Now we know what caused most of our problems. You know so, right on, it, it, it's, a, it's an element on the element table. Obviously, 86 and stuff isn't really too informative, but it is a, an element if you weren't sure. This is the long, drawn out definition of radon. It is a colorless, odorless, tasteless gas that derives from the breakdown of uranium in the Earth's soil. It's lighter than air, so it tries to escape the soil, and it breaks into any cracks in your home's foundation, and then settles in that living area. Years of exposure to uh, radon, the EPA says, can lead to lung cancer. In fact, um, only smoking causes more lung cancer deaths in the United States. Uh, it is the second leading cause of lung cancer, radon is. Um, this, uh, just a little information about the Surgeon General and just different um, Sources verifying that radon is a problem, it is a health risk. Um, over 20,000 Americans die annually from radon-induced lung cancer, um, and uh, millions of homes have radon um, currently, and your risk is higher for radon if you are a smoker. You should test for radon. This is just more um, what the Surgeon General has to say about radon. Again, indoor radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. This is Dr. Carmona, um, is the current surgeon in general for radon. Um, point of the matter is, it's a pretty big deal, <laughs> radon is. Um, you need to be aware of it, you need to be concerned about it, and you need to educate your clients about it when um, either you're selling or um, being a buyer's agent. 21,000 deaths a year in the US. Um, Radon-induced lung cancer is the only definite link um, that radon has as far as health risks go. There's not really any other um, definite health risk related to radon, but the lung cancer one is a pretty serious one. Um, this is interesting. So 13% of the 21,000 deaths on average a year, um, which is about 2,700, have never smoked in their life. Um, take that as a comparison. Um, point of reference, 3,000 deaths from secondhand smoke, which is the third leading cause of death. So when you start looking at it like that, you're like, wow, it's a pretty big deal. Um, most exposure, radon-induced lung, or radon, I always mess that up, induced lung cancer um, is derived from homes that have low to moderate uh, radon potential. Um, and just a little fact, Americans spend between 80 and 85% of their time indoors. So it is very worth your while to get your home tested for radon. This is um, a little interesting. Again, there's no definite um, link between asthma and um, radon. However, um, being that one in five schools in America, along with millions of homes and apartments, have indoor air quality problems, uh, this can trigger various allergies, including the asthma. Um, and then if you have the radon there, um, it's still not very valuable for your health. And can create more problems, but again, it's not, there's no, there's some evidence, but there's not a whole, whole lot, but it's still something to keep in mind. Um, and the asthma accounts for 14 million school days missed each year. Um, the rate of asthma in young children has risen, um, and today one of, out of 13 every school age children has asthma. So if you are living in a house and you do have asthma, um, you know, again, radon can be detrimental to that. Uh, radon health risk with age. Um, there's no definite link between if it's uh, a child or an adult, therefore everybody is at the same exposure risk if there is radon in your house. It doesn't matter, everybody's still um, definitely liable to get radon-induced lung cancer. Um, what evidence is there? 
to support these claims. Again, a lot of my information is coming from the EPA. Uh, EPA.gov is a fantastic website. It has maps and tools and games and all types of stuff that you can go on um, and play. Also, uh, we blog about radon a lot as well and cover stuff that I'm not going to cover here today. Um, we also have our personal radon technician does some of uh, the blogs as well, so you get an actual technician's view of radon and placing it and how he really feels um, about you know its problems and exposures in the home. Um, but the most comprehensive uh, effort is the National Academy of Sciences Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation Report. Uh, this report reinforces that radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer in the United States. So again, it's kind of a big <coughs> Points of entry. Uh, I don't have a basement. I don't need to test for radon. I hear this all the time. I'm not sure if you guys ever hear it um, or clients are like, oh, I don't have a basement. I don't really need to test for radon, do I? Well, the thing is, is that radon is most commonly found in a basement because that is the lowest point of entry. So what happens if you have a slab or a crawl and there's a crack in your foundation? Where's the radon going to escape to? Wherever that living space is, that lowest space where the crack is. So it's just commonly found in basements, again, because it is the lowest point, but it doesn't have to be um, necessarily in a basement at all. In fact, the highest reading that we had at Cornerstone was on a slab, uh, and it was something like 16. Oh my God. Yeah, it was, it was very, very high. Um, and we do find radon in over 50% of the homes that we test for at Cornerstone, at least. Um, sort of what I actually just went over. Um, this means all homes, new or old, well sealed or drafty, with or without basements, they're all liable um, for radon exposure. Uh, I like to talk about a little bit of myths versus facts. Again, you probably have clients who try to educate you, saying, oh, well, I was, you yeah. know, <laughs> well, I used to live in here. That's just a hoax. And I don't know. Well, okay. So, wait a minute. Something seems wrong there, okay. So myth, scientists aren't sure radon is really a problem. Well, um, the National Science Academy of Ionization and Radon Report as very comprehensive review. Um, these ones right here, the Center for Disease Control, American Lung Association, American Medical Association, all agree uh, with radon estimates um, cause thousands of preventable deaths every year. So a lot of uh, verifiable sources um, are definitely on board backing up these claims. And again, it's the second leading cause um, of lung cancer next to smoking. Radon testing is difficult, time consuming, and expensive. Well, the testing itself is easy. Um, mitigation might be a different story, and that all depends on the company that you choose. We actually do not do the radon mitigation at Cornerstone. Uh, we do have some referrals, but um, that's, like I said, a whole other story. Uh, and that can also be negotiated if you're on the buyer side and they find, you know, you can make get the seller to pay for it, what have you. Um, and it, I guess it could, well, I guess it wouldn't work the other way, but um, and that, that's just it. Radon testing is very easy. You just call us, schedule an appointment. It's cheap. We come to the house, we place it, need about a minimum, minimum of 48 to 72 hours um, for it to sit in the home uh, and get the readings back. And usually what we'll, we do is we place the radon uh, for your client's call, schedule an inspection um, with a, a radon inspection as well. We'll place the unit uh, two to three days prior to the actual inspection. That way we can have it ready and sent out with the report um, on the same day as well. Radon only affects certain types of homes. Um, again, this would be only homes with a basement or only homes with a crawl space or only homes in Colorado or what have you. Um, as we've seen, that is not the case. Uh, there was some interesting things that I found. Um, the EPA states that local geology construction materials and how the home was built uh, can be among the factors that affect radon levels. Some of these construction materials, just depending on where they were um, initially mined from, the initial materials, can still have a slight radon signature to them, is all that's really saying. Um, it, it's, it's not that, like, the the radiation that is given off from these construction materials is not enough to really cause a radon-induced lung cancer, but if you already have, let's say, a low to moderate amount of radon exposure in your home already, it definitely can increase that exposure a little bit as well. Um, I thought there was something else I wanted to add here. Did you get your office 
Now yeah, that's a great question. Um, office buildings do not get checked very often, but they should, along with schools as well. And that relates back to the asthma um, and the kids being in school. Um, should definitely check office buildings. Again, I mean, if this is the lowest entry point, you know, in this building, and there's a crack in the foundation, then the I mean, radon could be here. But we don't, as often as we should. Testing. The only way to be sure um, that you don't have radon in is colorless, odorless, and tasteless is to test for that. Um, again, it's a 48 to 72 hour minimum process. Uh, the device itself, oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, as far as readings go, uh, we place two devices in a home um, at, at the same price, obviously, but just in case uh, a construction material or there's a window open or a door open for too long, because um, radon is always naturally in the air, uh, it's just when it gets into those condensed, consolidated places as it stay. Um, but we, we take two different devices, so we get two readings. That way, if one's way off and one's not, we know that there's probably some tampering um, with the readings in some way, shape, or form. Radon levels. Uh, one out of 15 homes in the U.S. do have elevated um, levels of radon, and these can be more extreme based on where you live. Uh, Indiana is actually classified, oh, here we go, uh, as zone one, which is, or all of central Indiana at least, uh, zone one, which is the highest exposure according to the EPA. So here we see Indiana, and in the central part there, um, you know, Carmel, Hamilton County, Mary County, all of those very, very high uh, exposure risk for radon. Um, and this just sort of breaks down, it's a little, it's like a little blurry, but um, <coughs> just breaks down zone one, highest potential. Um, these places have greater than four. I can never say the PCI per liter, PITCO in areas per liter or something. It's a very, very small, small amount. Um, is how they measure it. The, uh, I always forget this one too. I want to say Curie, but carry or Curie, um, which is a weight of radioactive material, I believe. It's just a... Um, it's a small, smaller amount of that even. So it's a very, very, very little amount that it's measured by, but that little amount does have detrimental effects. And it just goes down um, to show. And again, all this information is available at epa.gov or uh, our website, csinspection.com. This is a little bit more blurry than I intended. I may not get there. Basically, um, what this is showing is based on the levels of measure that radon is done by, um, starting at one point, or 20, it works its way down. So down here is 0.4 and then it works its way up. It actually goes through, and I'm sorry this is a little hard to see, or very hard to see. Um, it sort of gives you the, what am I looking for here? Um, ratios or the factors. Um, so if you have a 1.3 PCI per liter, about two people could get lung cancer. Um, and it gives you sort of like, you know, you have the same chance of getting hit in a car crash type of thing. So you can really, if you get back the dreaded 4.0 radon reading, which I know nobody likes to get that at all, um, you know, that according to this, it's actually, well, depending on if they smoke or never smoke, it's about the same chances of getting hit in a car crash. It's one in a million is what it is. I'm not sure if that's the same as a car crash. I forget, actually, my condition would be a little off. But, so it's not actually that bad. But it's, you know, 4.0 is where uh, the EPA says, starting at that level of radiation um, exposure, you can lead to lung cancer. And this is also years of exposure, too. You're not going to walk into a room with radon, breathe it, and get lung cancer immediately. Um, 15 years or so is what the EPA says happens there. This is a little information on the PICO per liter uh, Pico Curies. Curies is the, the term I was looking for. Um, I'm not going to go through all this. If you want to sort of breeze over it, you can. Um, it's just showing how it's measured and that um, the, the measured unit is, is a very, 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 very small, small unit. I was actually talking to my radon technician.